He was too quick for shooting guards and too big for point guards. He could lull you to sleep before blowing past you or step way out for a deep three. He looked out of control driving to the hoop sometimes, like a downhill runner in football, but he somehow always found a way to finish the layup. And when it came down to the last shot, he wanted the ball in his hands. But a career that started so promising derailed so abruptly for Gilbert Arenas. He was an unexpected star for the Arizona Wildcats before falling in the NBA draft. He would again prove the doubters wrong in Golden State, then spend his best years in Washington as one of the league's top scorers. But his best years were short-lived, as at the age of 25, he suffered a knee injury that completely changed his ability and career trajectory. A locker room gun incident hurt his reputation in the later years of his career, but it was a knee injury that just wouldn't heal that stole the career of one of the league's brightest young stars. He was never a lockdown defender, but active hands and some gambling on the defensive end still saw him rack up a lot of steals during his prime. And although he never met a shot he didn't like, his confidence in taking them made fans believe it was going in. He was consistently at the top of the scoring leaderboards before he was 25, then was out of the league just five years later. But everyone knows just how much of a problem a healthy Agent Zero was. So that's why he's the focus of today's video. Let's jog your memory. Born in Florida, Gilbert Arenas grew up in Los Angeles, where as a young child he would spend some time being homeless. He would start at Grant High School in North Hollywood, but in a big state like California, Arenas recalls not getting much attention, as scouts focused on the more blue chip names throughout the state and didn't spend much time scouting the smaller North Hollywood area. But that's not to say that Arenas wasn't worth scouting, as his senior season saw him average 34 points and 8 rebounds per game. He would end his career as Grant's leading scorer, but would only have offers from DePaul, Kansas State, and Arizona. And Arenas would choose Arizona as yet another great point guard to play under Hall of Fame coach Lute Olson. Upon arrival, Arenas saw that he would not be wearing his usual number 25, as that was hanging in the rafters for Steve Kerr, so he would instead choose the number 0. And this was more than just a number for him, as it represented the number of minutes that people thought he would play as a freshman at Arizona. Arenas was part of a recruiting class which included Luke Walton, as they would join a Wildcats team featuring future NBA talent like Lauren Woods and Richard Jefferson. But Arenas' jersey number definitely wasn't representative of his minutes, as he wouldn't just play, he would start 31 games and finish second on the team in minutes per game. He would finish as the team's third leading scorer and would even lead the team in steals at over two per game. The Wildcats would rank as high as number two in the nation, but by the end of the regular season were the number nine team at 26 and six and had earned a tournament berth as a one seed where they would easily defeat Jackson State in round one as Arenas would have 16 points and four steals, but he would shoot just five of 13 from the field. However, they would also win this game without top scorer Lauren Woods, who had suffered a back injury in late February, which ended his season. The second round brought a better team in Wisconsin, and without Woods, the Wildcats would bow out of the tournament early. However, Arenas would play great, as he dropped a game-high 21 with 5 rebounds and 5 assists, but the issues that tainted his whole career was on display again, as he shot below 39%. But his unexpected freshman season ended with him averaging about 15.5 points, four rebounds, and two assists per game, as he was named to the Pac-10 All-Freshman team. The 0-1 Wildcats had brought back all their key players, and with the healed Woods, began the season as the top-ranked team in the polls. But they would still be without Woods for the first six games of the year, as he had been suspended for accepting a loan. But Arenas improved, as he became the team's leading scorer on more efficient shooting, while still leading the team in steals at nearly two per game. Although the Wildcats began as the top-ranked team, they would start slow, and on December 30th, they were just 7-3. and three. And then Olsen would take a leave of absence to be with his sick wife. During the five games he was away from the team, the Wildcats would go 3-2, and two, including a loss to number 2 Stanford. Once he returned, the Wildcats went 13-2 and two the rest of the way, which included a late-season defeat of top-ranked Stanford on the road, behind a team leading 22 from Arenas. Arizona would finish the year at 23-7 and seven and enter the tournament as a two-seed, where they would go on a much better run than last year. Arenas would have a team-high 21 on nearly 70% shooting in a first-round defeat of Eastern Illinois, followed by 15-8 and eight rebounds in a second-round defeat of Butler. The Sweet 16 brought Ole Miss, and although Arizona would win, Arenas would struggle, as he was the only starter to not record double figures, finishing with 8 points on 4 of 12 shooting. But he would lead the team with 3 steals. The Elite 8 was a much better outing for Arenas, as he put up a team-high 21 on nearly 54% shooting, along with 4 steals, to lead the Wildcats to a win over top-seeded Illinois 
and secure a spot in the Final Four, where they would take on defending national champion Michigan State in what turned out to be a blowout win for Arizona. Arenas only scored 12 points, but did so on 4 of 7 shooting while dishing out 7 assists and recording 6 steals, as the entire Wildcats team was hot. And now, they had a matchup with Duke for the national championship, but they would come up short. The Wildcats were playing catch up all game, and every time they would be close to tying it up, Duke would pull away again, as the Blue Devils won by 10, and it didn't help that Arenas would have his worst game of the tourney, as he put up 10 points on 4 of 17 shooting, as the entire team shot below 40%. But it is worth noting that Arenas came in with an injury, however he played through it. So for his sophomore season, he would average about 16 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 2.5 assists, as he was named first team all Pac-10. After two years with the Wildcats, Arenas declared for the draft, along with Woods and Jefferson. And even though Arenas had been the team's leading scorer, he fell out of the first round, and was drafted well after Jefferson. Arenas didn't understand why, but as Jefferson recently revealed, it wasn't because of a lack of skill, it was because of a lack of maturity, as Arenas had made a couple interesting decisions during the pre-draft process, which understandably could have affected his draft position. But now, he had been selected with the first pick of the second round by the Golden State Warriors. He was upset and felt he disappointed his father, as he wasn't even coming to the league with a guaranteed contract. The Warriors looked like they were building something, as they had a roster full of potential with the rookie arenas joining fellow rookie and fifth overall pick Jason Richardson, as well as a fourth year swingman in Larry Hughes, and the team's best player, fourth year power forward Antoine Jameson. As a rookie, arenas would play in 47 games for the team, starting 30 of them, and even in his limited opportunities, he would show his scoring ability, with a 32 point game on 11 of 15 shooting in a March 21st loss to the Clippers, as his 45.3% shooting this year would end up being a career high. Arena's season would see him finish as a top 5 scorer on the team and tie for first in steals, as he was also one of the league's top rookies, finishing 4th among rookies in scoring and 3rd in assists, as he recorded one double-double on the year. The Warriors were a fast-paced team with a top 10 scoring offense, but their league worst scoring defense limited them, as they would finish at 21-61 and, and miss the playoffs. And Arena's rookie season saw him average about 11 points, 3 rebounds, and 3.5 and assists per game. After going through two coaches during his rookie year, the Warriors would be led by Eric Musselman for the entire 03 season. Hughes had left in free agency, but another player from the Warriors 01 draft class in Troy Murphy had a much improved sophomore season, but it was nowhere near the improvement Arena showed. In year two, he would play and start in all 82 games for the only time in his career, as he upped his scoring by over 7 points per game and put up career high averages in rebounds and assists, while also leading the team in steals. Arenas would form a great young trio alongside Jamison and Richardson, as the three would lead the league's second-ranked scoring offense. Unfortunately, they once again featured the league's worst scoring defense, and although they improved, their 38-44 record was not enough for a playoff berth. Arenas would hit double figures in 71 games this year, and also record 11 double-doubles, while pulling down a career-high 12 rebounds in a November 5th loss to San Antonio as he would also explode for 41 points on 15 of 23 shooting versus Washington in a March 23rd win. The jump made by Arenas would get him in the rookie sophomore game, where he would win MVP, as on the year he was second among sophomores in scoring behind only Pau Gasol, and second in assists behind only Jamal Tinsley. But his biggest accomplishment came at the end of the year, when he was voted the league's most improved player, and his sophomore season saw him average about 18.5 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 6.5 and assists per game. However, for the second straight year, the Warriors would lose a top young player to the Wizards. Arenas was a restricted free agent and had narrowed his choices down to three teams, one being the Warriors, the second being the Clippers, who had offered him a six-year $60 million deal to join Elton Brand in LA, and finally the Wizards, who offered him $5 million more than LA, so Arenas would accept this offer. However, even though Arenas was a restricted free agent, the Warriors didn't have the cap space to match either of the offers. Had Arenas been a first round pick, there was an exception in place which allowed the drafting team to go over the salary cap to re-sign the player. But this exception did not apply to second round picks at the time. And it's because of this that the league changed this exception in the 05 CBA to include second round picks with the rule unofficially known as the Gilbert Arenas provision. So Arenas would join a Wizards team in transition as Michael Jordan had just retired for good and Jerry Stackhouse, who was supposed to be their top player, would have knee surgery before the year and would only appear in 26 games during the 04 season. But Arenas did get to reunite with his former Golden State teammate in Larry Hughes, as the two showed potential as a future backcourt, while also featuring guys like Jarvis Hayes and Aton Thomas, 
as well as former first overall pick Kwame Brown, who would play the best season of his career this year. Unfortunately for Arenas, he would struggle with an abdominal injury throughout the year, which would cause him to miss 27 games. He showed his ability when he did play, as he led the team in scoring, assists, and steals, which included a career-high 8 steals to go along with 27 points and 10 assists in a March 17th win versus Sacramento. Arenas would regularly hit double figures and even notch another 40-point game versus Orlando, which happened to be the same game Tracy McGrady went for 62, but with more offensive responsibility came more bad shot selection, as Arenas would shoot below 40% from the field, yet would still hit on nearly 38% of his threes. And with the injuries to Arenas and Stackhouse, as well as Hughes missing 21 games, the Wizards only managed a 25-57 and 57 record. And for his first season in Washington, Arenas averaged about 19.5 points, 4.5 rebounds, 5 assists, and 2 steals per game. During the previous offseason when Arenas had left for Washington, the Warriors also traded Jamison to the Mavs. And as that ended up being a failed experiment, it became a Golden State reunion in Washington. As during the offseason, the Wizards sent a package headlined by Stackhouse to the Mavs for Jamison. Arenas would be healthy this year, as he would begin his early and short-lived prime years. Hughes would again miss 21 games, and Jamison would miss 14, but they would still form one of the best trios in the league, albeit not the most efficient, as though they did combine to put up over 67 points per game, each of them shot below 44%. But Arenas had still taken a step to put himself in the conversation with the league's top offensive players. He did sit out the season opener, as he was serving a one-game suspension for failing to maintain proper registration of a handgun, which would end up being some foreshadowing. But after this, he would up his scoring to over 25 a game, as he would finish as the league's 7th best in that category. He would hit double figures in 76 games, and put up at least 40 in 6 games, and would record 2 double-doubles on the year. He would also finish 6th in the league in steals, with his backcourt mate Hughes finishing as the league leader. Arena's great year would see him voted to his first career All-Star game, as well as be named 3rd team All-NBA. But more importantly, he had led the Wizards to the playoffs. They would get the Bulls in Round 1, and although Arenas would be the leading scorer and distributor out of both teams for the series, it wasn't the prettiest performance. He started terribly, with 9 points on 3 of 19 shooting in a Game 1 loss, but would come back with 39 and 4 steals on 56% shooting in a losing effort in Game 2. So down 2-0, heading home, Arenas would play solid with 32 points. However, he would go 2 of 10 from deep, but the Wizards got the win. He would have an efficient 23 in a Game 4 win, and then late in Game 5 in Chicago, which Arenas had been struggling in, all was forgiven, as with the game tied, he hit a buzzer-beater fadeaway to give the Wizards the win and a 3-2 lead heading back to Washington. The Wizards would take care of business to take the series, however, Arenas had another rough performance, with 19 points on 6 of 24 shooting, as he would shoot below 38% for the series, but the Wizards had won their first playoff series since 1982, and booked a matchup with the Miami Heat. Even with Shaq only appearing in two games this series, the Heat still swept the Wizards, Arenas continued his frustrating play, once again leading the Wizards in scoring and assists, but again shooting about 38% from the field and less than 23% from deep. While he did score at least 20 points in all four games, he would shoot above 39% in just one of them. Although it was a sweep, it was a close series, with the final three games being decided by seven points or less. But the Wizards season had come to an end, and the regular season had seen Arenas put up about 25.5 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 5 assists per game. The 06 Wizards would once again be led by a great trio, but it wasn't the same trio as last year. Hughes had signed with Cleveland in the offseason, but the Wizards were able to find a great fit to replace him in fourth year forward Karan Butler, who was acquired from the Lakers in a package that saw the Wizards ship out Kwame Brown. This trade would be a big win for Washington, as Butler plugged in great to give the Wizards three players combining for over 67 points per game. But it would be Arenas who would have his best season of his career. At just 24 years old, he would average nearly 30 points per game to finish 4th in the league and do so on one of his most efficient shooting years at nearly 45% from the field and 37% from deep. He would hit double figures in 79 games, have 42 games with at least 30, and 11 with at least 40, while also recording 9 double-doubles. Additionally, he would have 16 games with at least 4 steals, as he would finish 4th in the league in that category as well, on a career-high 2 per game. Surprisingly, he was not voted an All-Star and would only find his way into the game as an injury replacement for the Pacers' Jermaine O'Neal, and he would participate in the three-point shootout, finishing as a runner-up. Although the Wizards were scoring more and allowing less than last year, they would finish with a worse record at 42-40, and but it would still be enough for a playoff berth versus the Cleveland Cavaliers, featuring Hughes and LeBron James. 
Arenas and LeBron would have an underrated playoff duel, as LeBron averaged nearly 36 a game, but Arenas countered with 34 of his own, and did so on a relatively efficient 46.4% shooting. Arenas would score at least 30 in 5 out of the 6 games, which included his postseason career high of 44 points on over 58% shooting in a 1 point Game 5 loss, which led to the Cavs taking a 3-2 series lead with the chance to end it in Washington. Arenas would have arguably his best game of the series in Game 6, as he went for 36 points and 11 assists on nearly 52% shooting, and came up clutch in the closing seconds of regulation. As with the Wizards down 3 with 5 seconds left, Arenas received an inbounds pass and drained a deep 3, which forced overtime. And the Wizards looked like they had the game in the bag, up by 1, late in OT, with Arenas heading to the line to potentially put Washington up by 3. And then Arenas would miss the first, but that's okay, he can still make the second one and give the Wizards a much better chance to at the very least go to double OT. But what did LeBron just say to Arenas? Well, I'll let him tell you. He said, if you miss these free throws, you know who's going to win it. Still though, Arenas thrives in the clutch, so there's no way he could miss both, and he just missed both. So with one last possession, and everyone in the world knowing LeBron is getting the last shot, the ball found its way to Damon Jones for the game winner as the Cavs moved on. And for his regular season, Arenas put up about 29.5 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 6 assists per game. The Wizards would make a good offseason move by signing Deshaun Stevenson and would roll out another year of their trio with Arenas once again leading the way. The three would combine for over 67 a game and Arenas would finish as the league's third best scorer. However, his efficiency took a hit as he shot below 42%. He and Butler would each finish top 10 in steals and Arenas would tie for the most made threes this year. And even though Arenas scoring was down about a point from the year before, he put together some of his best games. On December 17th versus Kobe Bryant and the LA Lakers, he would score a career high and Wizards franchise record 60 points in an overtime win, which included 21 made free throws. And you look at this game and think, oh, he needed overtime to get to 60, which is true. But he began overtime with 44, putting up an NBA record 16 points in an OT period to finish with his career high. Then just five days later versus Phoenix, he would drop 54 points. And this was a pure 54, as he shot only six free throws, making all of them, while going 21 of 37 from the field. Then to follow that up a few weeks later, against Utah, he would put up his third and final 50 point game of the year, when he had 51 while going 16 of 17 from the free throw line, as he would also have one of his most famous clutch buckets, when he hit a deep three at the buzzer to give Washington the win. And this wasn't his only buzzer beater game winner this year, as he would also beat Milwaukee with a buzzer beater three, and beat Seattle on a tough buzzer beating layup. He would be voted to the All-Star game for the third consecutive year, this time as a starter, and would also participate in the three-point shootout again. And although he didn't win, in true Gilbert Arenas fashion, he would shoot his final rack one-handed. But with the Wizards sitting at 39-34, and 34, and playing the second of a home-and-home -home versus the Bobcats, Arenas wouldn't be in the starting lineup, as Eddie Jordan had benched him in favor of Antonio Daniels. Arenas was late for the shoot-around, which had apparently become a bit of a superstition for him, as he and Brendan Haywood explained that years earlier Arenas had a good game versus San Antonio after showing up late to the second game of a back-to-back, -back, which led to a superstition of him being likely to have a good game if he showed up late to the shoot-around of the second game in a back-to-back. -back. And apparently Wizards head coach Eddie Jordan had continued to allow this unorthodox routine for all of Arenas' time in Washington after the initial game. But after being late for this April 4th contest, he wouldn't be in the starting lineup and was planning on leaving until an injured Karan Butler convinced him to stay and play. But then late in the first quarter, his whole career changed. Gerald Wallace had fallen into Arena's knee, tearing his meniscus and ending his year. And without Arena's or Butler, the Wizards went 2-7 the rest of the way to finish at 41-41. They would get another matchup with the Cavs in the playoffs, but the depleted Wizards would be swept. And Arenas had apparently boycotted the playoffs due to hearing that Eddie Jordan had been happy that he had gotten injured. But for his regular season, he put up about 28.5 points, 6 assists, and 2 steals per game. Although his year ended poorly, he did find himself on the cover of NBA Live 2008. But this would be one of his lone bright spots of the next few years. Surprisingly, Arenas was ready to go to begin the 08 season, and would even drop 34 in the season opener and was putting up over 22 per game after the first 8 games. But in a November 16th game versus Minnesota, he would have 27 points, but would unknowingly re-injure his knee, leading to another surgery about a week later, which would keep him out of the next 65 games. Then he would return on April 2nd to play 5 more games near the end of the year, as the Wizards finished 43-39, and 
and got a third straight first round matchup versus Cleveland. Arenas looked good in game one, with 24 points on 50% shooting, but his knee quickly started to give out as over the next three games he would score a combined 19 points and would then sit out games five and six as the Wizards again were bounced by the Cavs. And for his regular season, Arenas would appear in just 13 games, putting up about 19 and a half points, four rebounds, and five assists per game. Arenas opted out of his contract in the offseason, but said he would re-sign if the Wizards re-signed Jameson, which they did. Then Arenas re-signed. But he didn't just re-sign, he cashed out, as a player who missed 69 games the previous season had just signed a max deal worth over $110 million. But the Wizards weren't the only team to offer him that kind of money as Golden State had also reportedly thrown a max deal and a new house at him. Additionally, Arenas had actually taken less than was originally offered to give the Wizards more financial flexibility. But as many know, the Arenas signing would end up being one of the worst of all time. About a month and a half before the 09 season, Arenas underwent surgery on his knee again after soreness during summer workouts, which would keep him out for months. He would begin practicing in February and would eventually make his return on March 28th versus Detroit where he would put up 15 points and 10 assists. He would play one more game before being shut down for precautionary reasons, as a rapidly declining Wizards team, who had fired Eddie Jordan early in the year, had gone 19 and 63. So in a season where he played just two games, he still made over $14 million. And in his two games, he averaged 13 points, four and a half rebounds, and 10 assists per game. Arenas would come back in 2010 looking healthier and playing solid. He looked to be regaining his stride as although his scoring was down, he, Jameson, and Butler were still putting up a combined 60 points per game, with Arenas leading the team. However, Arenas would still appear in just 32 games this year, but his season wouldn't be ended by an injury this time. And this is where that foreshadowing from his 05 season opener suspension comes in. On January 6th, Arenas was suspended indefinitely, after he admitted on December 24th, 2009, that he had violated team and league rules by bringing unloaded firearms into the team locker room. Then about a week after initial reports came out, a first-hand account was revealed that Wizards teammate Javaris Crittenton had threatened Arenas with a loaded gun over gambling debts on Christmas Eve, the same day Arenas confessed to storing guns at the team facility. And Arenas was serving an indefinite suspension, but the league hadn't made a decision for how long. But he wouldn't help his case when he reportedly joked about it on Twitter and was photographed shooting his teammates with finger guns in a pregame huddle. When the investigation was completed in late January, Arenas and Crittenton were both suspended for the remainder of the year, and both received federal charges, with Arenas being sentenced to two years probation. At the time of the suspension, the Wizards were 11-21, and, and would go 15-34 and the rest of the way, to finish 26-56 and and miss the playoffs. And Arenas would average about 22.5 points, 4 rebounds, and 7 assists per game. Going into the 2011 season, it was a completely different Wizards team. Jameson and Butler had been traded to Cleveland and Dallas respectively, less than a week apart the season prior around the trade deadline, as Arenas was the only one left from the trio. But he knew his days were also numbered, as it was only a matter of time for Washington to find someone willing to trade for him. And if it wasn't clear that his time was up after the gun incident, it was made crystal clear when they selected Kentucky's John Wall first overall in the 2010 draft. And although Arenas wasn't happy about his time in Washington coming to an end, he accepted that this was the case. He would change his number from 0 to 9 as a sort of new beginning. But he was still pretty young, as he began the year at 28 years old and would play in 21 games for the Wizards while starting 14 of them. And even though he was shooting below 40% during these games, there was still no doubt he could score as he was the team's leader, while also being their second best distributor behind John Wall, who was quickly looking like a star. So to show full commitment to him, the Wizards sent Arenas to Orlando on December 16th for Richard Lewis. This was a bit of a full circle moment for Arenas, as he had been an Orlando Magic fan as a kid, and chose to wear number one in honor of his favorite player, Penny Hardaway. Arenas was now on probably the best team of his career, and would give some solid minutes as a backup to Jameer Nelson. But his shooting continued to suffer, as in 49 games with Orlando, he would shoot below 35% from the field, and 28% from deep, as he put up single-digit scoring for the first time in his career. However, this was the first time Arenas was on a team that won 50 games, as the Magic went 52-30 and, and got a first-round matchup with Atlanta, but they would lose a close series in six games. Arenas wouldn't do much this series, scoring in double figures once. However, it would be an impressive 20 points on 9 of 18 shooting off the bench in a Game 4 loss. And overall for the year, Arenas would play in 70 games, putting up about 11 points, 
two and a half rebounds, and four assists per game. The NBA lockout occurred over the summer, which led to a shortened 2012 season. But before the season started, Arenas was waived by Orlando. He would sign on with Memphis late in the season on March 20th, and appear in 17 of the remaining 22 games in limited minutes. Memphis would finish 41-25, and, and get the Clippers in round one, who they would lose to in seven games. Arena saw very little playing time, as he appeared in six of the seven games while getting less than four minutes per game, and his very brief season ended with him averaging about four points, one rebound, and one assist per game. And that would be it on the NBA career of Gilbert Arenas, but he would appear in 14 games for the Shanghai Sharks during the 2013 season, where he would put up about 21 points, seven rebounds, and three assists per game for a Sharks team that missed the playoffs. And additionally, in more recent years, he would appear in the Big Three League. But going back to his NBA career, it was over at 30 years old. And fans really only got to see Gilbert Arenas at his best for three seasons. Yeah, the gun incident didn't help him stick around in the NBA, but it was the knee injury that changed everything. A freak accident that just wouldn't heal and took so much of the ability that made him so great. And what's even crazier is that he was putting up back-to-back -back seasons of nearly 30 a game before he was 25. And then the injury hit when he was 25 so we likely hadn't even seen the best of Gilbert Arenas. He was as good of a scorer as the league had to offer and had the game and personality that fans loved. Most importantly, he helped bring respectable basketball to Washington during a transition period and would even give them their first playoff series victory in decades at a time when they were looking for an identity. He may have been a shot chucker, but he was launching 40 footers long before it became the somewhat common shot that it is today. And he was a player who could actually make them. Gilbert Arenas is one of the lesser talked about what ifs in NBA history, but for a brief period in the mid 2000s, his name was firmly in the conversation of best scorer in the game. But that's it for today's episode on Gilbert Arenas. Hope you enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe for more like this one. If you liked it, check out this one on his brief teammate in Washington, or this one on the player he was traded to Orlando for. Thanks for watching and see you next time.